Hello, this is Abbott Austin for another session of Talk Lexio, where I'll go through a passage of scripture and use the method of Lexio Divina to pray with it. And so we're going to use uh, the Gospel of Matthew chapter 13, verses 24 through 43. So Matthew chapter 13, 24 through 43. And this is the uh, Gospel for tomorrow's Mass. So this is the Gospel reading for tomorrow. Uh, there is an option to read a shorter version of it. So if you're uh, if you go to Mass tomorrow or uh, have to live stream for Mass and you hear a shorter version, uh, that's one of the options too. So it's a little bit on the longer side, um, but it's very fascinating and has uh, interesting imagery in it. So uh, we'll begin with prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, we ask that you open our hearts and our minds to understand your scriptures that we may know your will and know the joy of living by your will through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the, name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So I'll read the passage uh, twice, and here this is the first step of Lexio Divina, where you're going to simply read it, and read it with attention, uh, read it uh, with a listening heart. So um, we're not rushing, we're trying to see something that catches our attention in the reading. And so... Um, you know, read it with that in your in your thoughts. What what strikes you about this passage? So again, this is Matthew chapter thirteen, verses twenty four through forty three. Jesus proposed another parable to the crowd, saying, "The kingdom of heaven may be likened to a man who sowed good seed in his field. While everyone was asleep, his enemy came and sowed weeds all through the wheat, and then went off. When the crop grew and bore fruit, the weeds appeared as well." The slaves of the householder came to him and said, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where have the, the weeds come from? He answered, An enemy has done this. His slaves said to him, Do you want us to go and pull them up? He replied, No, if you pull up the weeds, you might uproot the wheat along with them. Let them grow together until harvest. Then at harvest time I will say to the harvesters, First collect the weeds and tie them in bundles for burning, but gather the wheat into my barn. He proposed another parable to them. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that a person took and sowed in a field. It is the smallest of all the seeds, yet when full grown it is the largest of plants. It becomes a large bush, and the birds of the sky come and dwell in its branches. He spoke to them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed with three measures of wheat flour until the whole batch was leavened. All these things Jesus spoke to the crowds in parables. He spoke to them only in parables to fulfill what had been said through the prophet. I will open my mouth in parables. I will announce what was has lain hidden from the foundation of the world. Then dismissing the crowds, he went into the house. His disciples approached him and said, Explain to us the parable of the weeds in the field. He said in reply, He who sows good seed is the son of man. The field is the world, the good seed, the children of the kingdom. The weeds are the children of the evil one, and the enemy who sows them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the harvesters are angels. Just as weeds are collected and burned up with fire, so will it be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will collect out of his kingdom all who cause others to sin and all evildoers. They will throw them into the fiery furnace, where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their Father. Whoever has ears ought to hear. So uh, again, a pretty long passage of uh, scripture, but... It all kind of works together. So we'll go through it again. Uh, listen to it through this first time. You might have noticed some things. There are three parables. And the first parable, second, and third parable. And at the end, uh, Jesus comes back to the first parable and explains it. So let's read this again. Jesus proposed another parable to the crowd, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be likened to a man who sowed good seed in his field. While everyone was asleep, his enemy came and sowed weeds all through the wheat, and then went off. When the crop grew and bore fruit, the weeds appeared as well. 
The slaves of the householder came to him and said, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where have the weeds come from? He answered, An enemy has done this. His slaves said to him, Do you want us to go and pull them up? He replied, No, if you pull up the weeds, you might uproot the wheat along with them. Let them grow together until harvest. Then at harvest time I will say to the harvesters, First collect the weeds and tie them in bundles for burning, but gather the wheat into my barn. He proposed another parable to them. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that a person took and sowed in the field. It is the smallest of all the seeds, yet when full grown it is the largest of plants. It becomes a large bush, and the birds of the sky come and dwell in its branches. He spoke to them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed with three measures of wheat flour until the whole batch was leavened. All these things Jesus spoke to the crowds in parables. He spoke to them only in parables to fulfill what had been said through the prophet. I will open my mouth in parables. I will announce what has lain hidden from the foundation of the world. Then dismissing the crowds, he went into the house. His disciples approached him and said, Explain to us the parable of the weeds in the field. He said in reply, He who sows good seed is the Son of Man. The field is the world, the good seed the children of the kingdom. The weeds are the children of the evil one, and the enemy who sows them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the harvesters are angels. Just as weeds are collected and burned up with fire, so will it be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will collect out of his kingdom all who cause others to sin, and all evildoers. They will throw them into the fiery furnace, where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their Father. Whoever has ears ought to hear. So again, this is a, a very long passage, uh, but there's so much imagery going on in here. And so uh, first thing to mention here as we move on to our, the second step of Lexi Divina, which is uh, meditation. And hi, Andrew. Um, so um, I see in the comments some people, so i uh, say hello to Andrew there. Um, so what we're doing, uh, when you take the reading passage, sometimes people ask you how much of a, you know, how much of a, how long a passage should we take? And uh, usually it's shorter than this. So this is on the longer side. Um, usually you'll get enough to think about in a shorter passage. So if you're wondering whether it's a good idea to read so much, uh, usually it's not. It's not the practice. But you can, and you can actually read longer. Because sometimes a longer passage, you'll see how they work to, it holds together. There's a common thread running throughout. And so that can be a good thing. And again, there is in this passage, because we start with this uh, first parable, then the second parable, third parable, some comments about parables, and then it comes back to the first parable. Jesus offers an explanation of the uh, first parable. And it's interesting, for one thing, that Jesus, his explanation of the first parable is commonly recognized as an allegory. So there's a whole bunch of commentary on allegories and what that means. Um, and so there's disagreement about it, but it's generally recognized he's doing an allegory here. And so if you ever hear uh, people say that uh, categorically that we should never have uh, all see allegories in scripture, um, this is kind of disproving that point. All right, a um, couple things I've noticed, I just, I'll just point out. So again, what you wanna do is you enter into meditation is you want to uh, have a starting point. Something kind of catches your attention and gets you thinking. So one thing is, is simply this. Right at the beginning, um, a phrase just kind of got me thinking a lot, and I'll throw it out there. Uh, Jesus opens by saying, the kingdom of heaven may be likened to a man who sowed good seed in his field. Okay, uh, just think of that for a moment. Just a person who sows good seed. And it seems to me uh, we can think of even just simply God in those terms. Uh, God is the sower of good seeds, right? So I think it's a very rich thing to think about, right? So what is a seed? A seed is, uh, you know, it's planted and it grows. It has a, a kind of trajectory to it, right? Where it's going to grow into first a, a smaller plant, whether it's a tree, a sapling, or uh, simply a bud comes out of the earth, whatever it is. 
Um, and we have in the second parable, we have the uh, mustard seed, right? So it grows ultimately to this large bush. So um, when God creates, one way of thinking about this is God, when he creates the world, in a way, it's a seed, right? So his creation is like a seed. It's meant to grow and develop and reach this fruition, right? To bear good fruit, right? And this is true of all creation. It's true, especially of us as human beings, right? So we're created in germ as it were, right? And the word germ comes from a word for seed, right? So, so we're created in germ and our full potential um, our full, you know, needs to germinate, right? It needs to grow and develop. And as human beings, our, our job, so to speak, our role, God-given role is to help creation to reach its fullness. So it's a very interesting. So even just creation itself, God is the sower of good seed. He's planted this world, so to speak, and uh, we're to help it grow and reach its fullness. So it's a very rich thing. Now, if you go on, though, and you look at this as a whole, what you see is that the man who sowed good seed in, the, in his field is, Jesus says later, the son of man. That is, it's Jesus himself. So then you can back up from creation and can look at creation as uh, the field, right? The field is the earth, uh, the, um, the world. And what happens is Jesus is planting in this creation the seeds of regeneration, right? The seeds of redemption, the seeds of salvation. So to take a world that has fallen and has lost its proper trajectory, right? Its proper um, trajectory of growth. And Jesus has come and planted seeds in it so that it grows in the right way, uh, not into weeds, but grows into things that bear fruit, right? So that's what Jesus does. He, he looks you know, he comes into this creation as a part of creation even, right? He's God, but he also becomes part of creation as a man, as a human being. And he sows a seed. Um, it, it's a very rich image. And the seed is going to bring new life. And in a way, it's going to take creation and bring it to what it's supposed to be and then even elevate it, right? Because this is what grace does. Grace um, heals what's broken in, in our own creation, in ourselves especially. Um, and then what it does, it elevates it to a new level as well. So healing and elevating. So Jesus plants a seed that does that. It is interesting as you go down and it says, um, when it describes what happened, the, the scripture says, when the crop grew and bore fruit, the weeds appeared as well. Okay, so the crop, the good crop that God plants bears fruit. And then the weeds appeared also, but the weeds don't bear fruit, right? So... And this is important, I think, for the, how this links, at least one way, in which this links with the uh, other two parables in this passage. In each case, um, what's going to happen is something's going to start and then it's going to bear fruit. It's going to grow into something larger and it's going to produce good results. Right? So first of all, this mustard seed that starts so small, right? it's going to bear uh, fruit in a way. It's going to become uh, bear or bring about good results. So it's going to become this large bush, right? And it's uh, going to be able to even uh, house uh, the birds of the field and so forth, right? So, um, so this is what happens with God's seed. What God sows, what the Jesus, the Son of Man, sows in creation, it's going to grow and bear good results. And then likewise with the leaven, the parable of the leaven, right? So uh, a different image than a seed, but again, the leaven is sown among this wheat flour, and what it, it bears is result. Uh, where it grows into something good, a good result. So we're supposed to examine ourselves with this passage and make sure we are the good wheat and not weeds. So we have to look at our lives and if Jesus is alive within us, if his seed is living in us, then uh, we should be bearing good fruit. It's especially good fruit for others. So it's interesting how um, the, the mustard seed becomes a tree that the birds live in, so other creatures live in. Uh, the leaven leavens other things, the wheat, not just simply itself, but it expands to something beyond itself. Likewise, the fruit that we bear, um, it's to expand, it's to go uh, good for us, but also go and be a good uh, deed for others. So um, that's something to think about as we examine ourselves. We want to make sure we are uh, the seeds that Jesus plants and we're growing in that way. One last thing to note there, too, along those lines is that when Jesus describes those who are the, um, who are the uh, weeds, he says um, they are those who cause others to sin and all evildoers. So all who co cause others to sin and all evildoers. 
So uh, the sin is, in a way, the opposite of what the good deeds were supposed to be doing. So it's supposed to be bearing fruit, becoming holy ourselves, and helping other people on the way to the kingdom. But those who are weeds do the opposite. Uh, they do evil in themselves, but also then there are those who cause others also to do evil. Um, so it's an interesting uh, opposition there if we look at ourselves. Okay, so those are just some thoughts. It's a very, very rich passage. Um, and it's, uh, there's so much to think about. So even if you just take one of those parables and meditate on it, it's, uh, you can get a lot out of it. When you have your meditation, then you move to the third step of Lexi Divina. And that third step is to pray. And so uh, you want to make your prayer a petition. So you're going to be asking for something. And um, so you ask for something based on what you came to kind of appreciate or understand through your meditation. And so we'll, um, so we'll move on to that, and I encourage you to do your own prayers. Uh, for doing that, um, just hello to uh, Kathleen and, uh, and Powell also who are joining us. Okay, so uh, again, I invite you to think of your own prayer, but I'll do one here as well. Almighty God, I ask that you continue to plant your seed, your, your life within me, and to allow it to grow into good works. May Christ live in me so that all that I do gives you glory and is helpful for the salvation of others. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And then once you make your petition, this prayer, it doesn't have to be many words. Um, if, if it is, if the Spirit moves you that way, great. But it doesn't have to be. But when you make your prayer and you ask for what you've seen God showing you in the Scripture, uh, your will is in a line up with God's will. And you simply rest in that peace. So, that's the final stage of contemplation, the basis of it, that our will is lined up now with God's will, and we simply rest in that. So we'll just spend a few moments of quiet resting in our petition. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. So thank you for joining me, and thank you uh, also those who join will join later as a recording. And may God bless you. Keep us here at St. Procopius Abbey in your prayers as well. God bless.